Good morning and welcome to the Truth and Transformation Ministries broadcast where you are transformed through the renewing of your mind. I am Reverend Dr. Reginald Howard, the founder and the spiritual director of Truth and Transformation Ministries. This month, our theme is wisdom and wisdom is the application of spiritual understanding. Our spiritual luminary is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was one of the world's greatest scientists and inventors. He utilized his wisdom to invent over 300 products using peanuts. The same wisdom that was in George Washington Carver is the same wisdom that lives inside of you. Now let us take some moments to just go within, to cleanse ourselves, to get in tune and in touch with the God within our being and reflect on the spiritual principle of wisdom. Let us close our eyes and let us take some deep cleansing breaths in, taking in the first deep breath and blowing it out. And blowing it out. Another deep breath in. And blowing it out. In which each cleansing deep breath you feel more and more relaxed in the spirit that lives within you. Another deep breath in. And blowing it out. Right now, we settle into the wisdom faculty that lives within us. Wisdom is the application of spiritual understanding. And right here, right now, we are applying our spiritual understanding to every aspect of our lives. We really are practicing our spirituality. And as we practice our spirituality, we see more and more of God in our experience because we know that we are the power of God in action. That we're rising in our divine nature. We're rising to know that we are a spiritual being first. And as we rise in that spiritual nature, we begin to see God in all aspects of our lives. We move forward in faith and love and strength and power and wisdom and imagination and zeal and ultimately life because we know that life is for living and we begin to live life. We are living life to the fullest degree possible because life is the hallmark of moving through this experience. There's only life and we move from this life unto more life. That's why Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven shall come on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom shall come on earth as it is in heaven. And so we begin to understand and know that wherever we are, heaven is. Wherever we are, the realm of ever-expanding good is because wherever I am, wherever you are, God is. And we are thoroughly enriched through this life experience, through our ability to apply our spiritual understanding to everything that we need to do. And so we stand on the richness that lives within our being. We give thanks for our spiritual luminary, George Washington Carver, and we give thanks for all of our ancestors, African-American ancestors, with B. Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. We give thanks for their model for it. They demonstrated a spiritual blueprint for exercising wisdom. And so we stand in it and we practice our spirituality right here, right now. Let, let us all affirm together, thank you God, in me, as me. Thank you God, in me, as me. Thank you God, in me, as me, and so it is. Let us take another deep breath in. 
and release. Good morning again and thank you for joining me on this broadcast where you are transformed each and every week through the renewing of your mind. This is the hallmark of our ministry. It is transformation. And transformation represents your ability to shift, permanently shift, your outlook and your lifestyle such that your entire being is completely altered. So that means that if there's anything negative in your life, you have the ability, you have the power, you have the wisdom, you have the understanding to shift anything out that's negative and make it anew in your life just by directing your mind toward God. The scripture tells us to knock and the door shall be open. Now we've heard that thousands and thousands of times to knock and the door shall be open. What is that really saying to us? What does the door represent? Because we have to understand that scripture is written at one level where it has a surface meaning, but the, uh, the scripture also will be going very deep and talking about something else. The door represents your consciousness or your awareness. And as you open, as you open the door of your consciousness, which is the door of your awareness, and you apply your spiritual understanding to every aspect of your life, you grow in wisdom. Now that's the challenge before us, that we have to apply our spiritual understanding to every aspect of our lives so that we grow in our wisdom, such that we grow in our spiritual nature. And when we are closed-minded, when you are closed-minded, you're closed off to the blessings of life. I'm going to repeat it again. When you are closed-minded, you are closed off to the blessings of life. And many of us are closed off to our own selves. We can't, we're talking about reaching God. You can't even, you can't even dig in and reach into your own self because you're closed-minded. Your mind has to be open to the God experience, the divine experience that lives within you. I remember years ago, my cousin told me that when you open yourself to God and be open, you're, you're really opening yourself to the blessings of God. See, we have to understand that God is always working through us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The Spirit is always pouring out a blessing to us. I, I know in Scripture it says, I'll pour you out a blessing that you don't even have room enough to receive. See, we've got to wake up to the spiritual enrichment that lives within us. We've got to wake up and realize that, that the kingdom of heaven is already there. So when we block out, when we close ourselves off, when we're closed-minded, we're closed to God. And so today we are, we are opening the doorway of our consciousness, the doorway of our divine awareness to the good that's there. Now, our transformative message is entitled opening the door way of your consciousness opening the door way of your consciousness number one when you open the doorway of your consciousness you realize that you are abundantly blessed now the scripture says beloved i wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health that you, that you prosper and be in, in, be in good health. Now, what is that saying to you? There's no reason to be going through the hell and the wretchedness on earth. It doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense. We have to realize that we have to prosper and be in good health. And that means that we have to prosper, be prosperous in all aspects of our lives. And as I have grown and matured, Spiritually, I realize that the spirit within me continuously blesses me. The spirit within me continuously blesses me. 
and, and it blesses me when I listen to the still small voice and when I apply what I know to be the truth to my life. I have to listen and apply. See, we have to practice our spirituality. This takes some, this takes some work. You have to practice your spirituality every moment of the day. So I'm embarking upon a new business but what I'm learning is that as I'm as I put God first and foremost in my mind that begins to establish divine order in my in all my affairs see we have to begin to realize divine order is already there it's already established but we have to turn toward divine order that means that we have to put God first in all of our affairs and so when we begin to do that we begin to prosper in all aspects of our being. And so I'm, as I begin to step forward in this new business, I know that the mark of success is upon me and it is upon the business that I'm developing. See, we have to accept that everything that goes before me is good. Everything that goes before you is good and very good. The pathway is already set. The blueprint for goodness is already set. All you have to do is begin to walk that pathway in faith, knowing that the groundwork is already laid before you. All you have to do is walk it. All you have to do is trust it. And trusting this God presence it means that you have to acknowledge that it's always there, that it's always blessing you. It is no, it's, it's no God anywhere that's raining down blessings and then stops the blessing. See, we have to continually remind ourselves because prayer is definite spiritual thinking. And what is the ultimate goal of prayer? It's to get yourself in alignment. You got to get yourself in alignment with the prayer that you pray. See, the prayer is not to convince God. It's to convince you on a human level that you are a spiritual being moving toward the goodness of God in your life. That's, that's all there is. It's good, but when we think of something other than good, then we, then we, then we have the manifestation of that. Stop st staying in the wretchedness of hell and damnation and all that crazy stuff about sin. You were not made in the image and likeness of sin. In fact, you are completely sinless. Now that's a controversial statement, but you are completely sinless. The sp why do I say that? The spirit of you is completely sinless. See, and as you begin to wake up and know who you are as a spiritual being, you begin to realize and know that you can do all things through the divine consciousness within you, through the Christ consciousness within you. But you can't do it holding on to ideas that I'm wretched, I'm no good, I'm a sinner. You are abundantly blessed as I have established in this first point that I'm making. You are abundantly, you are abundant, abundantly blessed. But unless you can accept it, you won't experience it. Number two, when you open the doorway of your consciousness, you realize that you always have the freedom of choice. When you open the doorway of your consciousness, you realize that you always have the freedom of choice. The scripture tells you, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. See, your back is never against the wall. We've made certain statements, cliches, my back is against the wall, or I'm, I'm under the gun. You are not under anybody's gun. Stop making these cliches. Stop saying them. Stop affirming them in your life. That's how you create hell in your life, which is an unhappy, unnatural state of mind. That's all that hell is. And you are the person that's creating the hell in your life. Even if somebody brings you some negativity, if you accept it, then it becomes your hell. So you always have the power of choice. You have the power of choice. 
And as I, again, as I've talked about building this business, as I've been working to build this business that I'm creating, I, I'm exercising the power of choice. That means I'm not anxious about anything that I have to do. There are many different contracts that I've got to look at and different types of administrative work that I have to embark upon, but as I'm embarking upon it, as I'm looking at it, as I build this business, as, as people bring dif their different ideas to me, I realize that I have to be in alignment or their idea has to be in alignment with the divine idea of the business. See, everything has purpose. And, and whatever you're building, no matter whether it's a business or whatever it is that you're creating, it has a cosmic purpose. And so whatever is being brought to me has to be in alignment with that purpose. So I'm not, I'm not rushing. I'm not overly anxious about anything. I'm moving with the divine knowingness that all is in divine order that everything is going as planned and all is well and all is good because I am making God first in my life I am making God a priority I am centering this business around God so the mark of success is really upon me but unless I'm consciously aware of that, I won't experience it. And unless you're consciously aware that the mark of success is upon you, you won't experience the goodness of God. So you got to claim that the mark of success is upon me right now and I am exercising my freedom of choice. You are never under any gun. You are ne your, your back is never against the wall. Even when you think your back is against the wall, it's not against the wall. People who know who they are in God move with the knowingness of God. You always have choices. And your choice is to exercise the high, to the highest degree possible the goodness of your life you're supposed to exercise the goodness that's there and there's always good there you may have to settle your mind the scripture tells you be still and know that I am God be still and what know that I'm God that means that wherever you are God is that means that wherever you are good is and your back is never against the wall that you are never under the gun. So it's because you are always exercising your freedom of choice. Number three, when you open the door of your consciousness, you realize that you are the one shaping your experiences. Your experiences do not shape you. I'm going to repeat it again. Because as a spiritual being, we've got to step into mastery. When you open the doorway of your consciousness, you realize that you shape your experiences. Your experiences do not shape you. Now the scripture tells us, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That means you got to come away as you clean your heart, as you clean your consciousness up. That means that you have to stop being embittered about your past experiences. You're gonna to have to do whatever you need to do to heal. You got to clean up those experiences and begin to step out into life anew. Stop holding on to the, the bitterness of the past. That's how we create depression. That's how you create anxiety. That's how you create despair through holding on to the bitterness. And many times it's so buried deeply in our minds, we're not even clear that we're even holding on to embitteredness. But it's now time for you to release it. Become consciously aware of it. Look at it. Accept that you have it. And then say, I release it. It's just as simple as that. You have to begin to realize it's a necessity for you to release it. If you don't, you're gonna create high blood pressure and 
heart disease and diabetes and all those negative things. People don't realize that as you think, so are you. That means that your body and your mind are connected. And the more you hold on to dysfunctional thoughts, the more you're going to have disease to accumulate in your body. And it also plays out in your relationships, how you relate to people. When you have an unhealed perspective, when you are unhealthy or have an unhealthy mind, you're going to relate to other people in an unhealthy way. And so many years ago, I had been turned down for several job opportunities. But what I learned, I didn't become embittered for, uh, because of that. Even with all my education, I still was turned down in many instances for a lot of jobs that I would have done very well at. But that's fine. Why do I say that? Because I learned that the best opportunities are the ones that I have created. I'm gonna repeat it again. The best opportunities have been the ones that I have created. Nobody's handed it to me on a silver platter. The best opportunities have been the ones that I have created. And so therefore, I have been employed, self-employed, for 21 years. I have been self-employed, working as a self-employed person for 21 years because I know that the best opportunities have been the ones that I've created. It hadn't been going to work for anybody else. And if you've been blessed working for somebody else, that's fine. I'm talking about my experience. The best opportunities have been the ones that I have gone forth to create for myself that has come out of the divine wisdom, the divine consciousness, the divine understanding that's within me. So we have to wake up and realize that the spirit is always there shaping and blessing us, but we've got to release all that negativity. You've got to release it. You've got to release depression. Whatever you're depressed about, release it. And realize that if you got it, that you can be elevated out of it. The scripture tells you, lift up your heads and be ye therefore lifted up. It's time for you to be lifted up in spirit. It's time for you to realize and know who you are. Yes, today you may be taking some type of antidepressants, but you don't have to take antidepressants forever. You can be healed and know who you are in the spirit. And that's what, this, that's what the scripture is telling us, to move forward in the knowingness of who and what we are. You are a divine spiritual being. You are a master, mastering the lessons of life. You are a spiritual master, mastering the lessons of life. You have a divine role and a divine cosmic mission and vision for being here on the planet. I don't care who you are, that is your job. You, your job is to live up to the divine mission and vision that the God presence has for you. And it's time for you to step out and embrace it. It's time for you to step out and be it. And stop saying what you don't have and realize that you have it all. You just have to grab it in consciousness. And stop saying, I'll believe it when I see it. You have to see it first in your mind before you can manifest it. I'm going to repeat it again. You got to see what you desire most in your mind first before you can manifest it. So we got to stop repeating all these cliches. I'll believe it when I see it. See it on the inside of you first. See you being that divine special person the center of your life. You got to be the center. You got to know that the divine consciousness, the God principle, God is operating through you, in you, and as you. I'm going to repeat it again. God is operating in you, through you, and as you. Now that's how God gets into the world. Now many people disagree with me about that. But when you think about it, how can God be separate from his own creation? Think about it now. You were made in the image and likeness of God. The scripture tells you that. 
and that you have to move forward in the knowingness of that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That's who you are. So let us review these three principles about opening the doorway of your consciousness. And remember, the doorway of your consciousness represents your awareness of who you are. Consciousness represents awareness. Number one, when you open the doorway of your consciousness, you realize that you are abundantly blessed. We say it here at Truth and Transformation Ministries all the time. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever I am, God is. If, if, if wherever I am, God is, that means that I am abundantly blessed. That's the same for you and me. Wherever you are, you are abundantly blessed. But you got to pull your mind up. You got to elevate your mind. I've talked about it more than on one occasion about the resurrection. We always talk about the resurrection of Jesus. Now we're talking about the resurrection of you. You got to come out of the, the graveyard of depression. You got to come out of the graveyard of anxiety. You got to come out of the graveyard of being angry. You've got to come out of the graveyard of being embittered and realize and know who you are and that as you ascend in your awareness of who and what you are only good can be before you but you got to practice your spirituality you got to get your mind straight you got to pray and meditate and turn yourself toward God 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year number two when you open the doorway of your consciousness you realize you always have choices you have the freedom of choice stop repeating the mantras that your back is against the wall my back is against the wall I, I was under the gun I'm always under the gun stop saying that you are not under anybody's gun see you judge yourself because nobody thinks in your mind but you so you're actually judging yourself in many instances and many times you're making a negative judgment of yourself. You've got to come out of that today. If you've made a mistake, if you've made several mistakes, if you made a thousand mistakes, begin to look at yourself and say, I'm beginning to do something else better. That's why the nature of this ministry is transformation. Again, transformation means that you must begin to shift your outlook and your lifestyle such that your entire being is permanently altered. See, be ye transformed through what? The renewing of your mind. And nobody thinks in your mind but you. But if you're on some negative stuff, that's what you're gonna have. Because that's how powerful you are as a spiritual being. If you call for hell, that's what you're gonna have. If you're saying, I'm going through hell, then that's where you're going to have more hell. It's time for you to wake up and realize that Jesus said, these and greater things shall you do also. The onus is on you. It's just like now when, when, the, when, the man, when Jesus said to the man, do you want to be healed? And he said, yes. He said, well, pick up your bed and walk. Today is your day to pick up your bed, to pick up your consciousness, to pick up your awareness, and to begin to walk spiritually in the nature of who and what you are. That's, that's the time. See, it's time for you to really be empowered through the Spirit and stop being laden down with being in sin and no good and i know that that's what many ministers preach about being no good and unworthy of the love of god that's not going to get you anywhere it's time for you to be liberated in the spirit and let go of all of that negativity and that's why i don't teach that at truth and transformation ministries is because we've got to become liberated we've got to reach our spiritual potential and if you don't reach your spiritual potential, it won't be because it's my fault. It won't be because I haven't taught and have, haven't been dedicated to teaching spiritual principles that empower you. It'll only be on you because either you don't believe it or you don't trust that it works. And I'm here to tell you that these principles work 
if you work them. These principles, these truth principles that I teach every Sunday, they will work in your life. If you take what I'm saying and work it throughout the week, you'll have a different kind of week. If you work your wisdom, you'll have a different kind of week. If you work your spiritual understanding, you'll have a different kind of week. If you work the spiritual principle of faith in your life, you'll have a different week. Stop thinking that you got to be depressed and angry and mad at somebody. You're really mad at your own self because you're frustrating your own spiritual potential. Number three, when you open the door of your consciousness and you realize that you, realize that you shape your experiences, your experiences do not shape you. And I've heard a thousand times over, my experiences made me who I am. You're the one that created those experiences. And so those experiences, whether they be good or bad, have shaped you. Those experiences that you've had, good or bad, you've, you've shaped those. And then you've allowed the negativity in, in there to shape you. It's time for you to begin to understand. Now I am co-creating with the God presence in my life. I am co-creating. I'm creating myself anew. And I'm moving out knowing who I am and deciding that I'm going to have some good experiences. Stop, stop going through the troubles of the world and thinking that you're just a human being going through the troubles of the world. You, it's time now for you to wake up and know who you are as a spiritual being, knowing that you are creating these divine experiences for yourself and that now you're beginning to elevate because it's now time for you to elevate. It's time for you to get out. If you're in the muck and the mire today, it's time for you to get out of the muck and the mire. Stop saying, I'm, 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 I feel stuck. Decide today, I am moving forward and moving through the experiences of life. I am not stuck. See, I am no longer stuck in the muck and the mire. You've got to begin to talk to yourself. You're not convincing God. God already knows what is and what is good for you. The scripture tells you, before you call, I will answer. So God is already standing on the side of good within you. It's your human self that's got to get convinced of what's good for you. It's your human self that's got to get out of that negativity. It's your human self that has to change its mind. See, what you're doing is that you're fusing your spiritual understanding into your human intellect. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing through this broadcast, through everything that you read that's of spiritual material. You're fusing your spiritual understanding into your intellect so that your, so that your human intellect can begin to wake up and say, something's different that's occurring within me. See, it's time now. It's time for you to begin to open the doorway of your consciousness. Begin to open the doorway of your awareness. Well, that's it in terms of our lesson this morning. I want to thank each and every one of you all who participated in our virtual seminar with Tony Browder and Chica Akua. And if you would like a copy of that presentation, you may either call me or email me. You may email me at Reginald H. Reggie at AOL.com, Reginald H. Reggie at AOL.com, or you may call me at 404 274 4300. 404 274 4300 if you would like a copy of the virtual presentation with Tony Browder and Chica Akua. Also, to donate to Truth and Transformation Ministries, you may do that through PayPal, which is paypal.me forward slash transform the number seven. PayPal.me forward slash transform the number seven. Or you may donate to Truth and Transformation Ministries through Cash App, which is dollar sign transformation 1971 dollar sign transformation 1971 
Also, for those of you all who are suffering with depression, anxiety, or anything that's holding you down that you feel that's holding you down, or if you feel like you're stuck, I am a spiritual clinical therapist with a PhD in psychology, and of course you know that I am an ordained minister, so I know both the healing side of moving into the divine spirit and also the therapeutic side. So you can call me for a session, to coordinate a session. My telephone number is 404-274-4300, 404-274-4300. Also, please like and share this liberating message on Facebook and wherever you may find it, whether it be on YouTube. But please like and share this liberating message. It's time for us all to be free in the spirit and to live in the oneness of God. That means in the in the in the knowingness of who we are as, as divine spiritual beings. I pray that you have been transformed through this message and that you have a positive productive seven day cycle. I look forward to joining you again next week. Be blessed.